So welcome to the channel. Today we're performing flight Iberia Express 3914 from Madrid over to Parma. As you've seen, we're in delivery of Air Europe and we're in the flight factor 757-200. We're going to be doing this flight in X-Plane 11. So a very short route. It will take us less than an hour. Uh, so it's a really nice flight. If you like your flights, so over around about an hour. I'm going to be entering the route manually, but don't let that put you off. Search the route page, which is down to the origin, destination and flight number. And do remember that you've got a nice feature on the flight factor where you can pop out the FMCs and use your keyboard as well to enter the data. Just makes things a bit easier in my experience. Over then to the legs, I beg your pardon. I'm going to go to the next page here and I'm just going to enter the first part of the route. So so a bit of a cheeky Nando's first, and then we're going to enter an airway um, uniform tango 257 up to a waypoint of Laspo. Just like that, and that's fine um, for what we need. We'll probably then pick up, I think it will be a Godox um, arrival into Parma. Just depends which way the winds um, is at the time, but at the moment I'm expecting to land on 2.6 uh, left. Activate that, execute it, and then what I tend to do in these is follow the order, but I tend to just push the init button. So we've already got the fuel loaded, 6.4 tonnes, that should be more than enough. Let's go ahead, just line select next to the zero fuel weight, that will populate the zero fuel weight of course and we'll enter the reserves I've not done anything you know exciting in terms of um, doing this in sim brief I think two for the reserves should do it and then cruise altitude well it is a 757 so we'll probably be able to get up to um, uh, a decent cruise altitude okay so we'll go for 370 cost index of 30 okay and let me think about the cruise wind. I think it's just westerly, but it's a very sort of gentle, um, gentle breeze. So thinking about the direction of the flight, let's go with 315. That goes in there. OK, let's bring up the progress page here and just confirm 310 miles to go. What we're going to do next is uh, before we do our takeoff page, uh, takeoff data, of course, we want to do the departure and arrivals. So 14 left, we're just parked adjacent to 14 uh, left at the moment. And a Nando to uniform departure. Execute that. There's our fuel prediction there of uh, 2.6 on arrival. That should be okay. Let's pop back to the legs page, just make sure there's no discontinuities. So here's Nando, and next page, up to LASPO. So initial alt, 130 or above, we'll just go ahead and we'll dial that in on the MCP. 130, and then I've got 140 set for the heading. OK, so we're just going to enter a flap 5 for our takeoff. OK, so for our takeoff data, that took me a moment to do, so I've got one that I made earlier, and it will be a flat 5 departure, 49 degrees assumed temperature, centre of gravity, and there's our uh, V speeds. I did just enter the um, runway wind component there on uh, page 2 of the takeoff data reference pages. Time to think about getting um, on our way, so let's start the APU. And I'm going to connect that. It goes to the on uh, position there. And do remember, switch on your AP bleed air and the isolation valve. Same as the 767, except that on the 76, you have an isolation valve either side. And a few other items up here then. We'll just go ahead and disconnect the external power. So that now just shows available. And we'll go ahead and Everyone should be in their seats now. Seatbelt signs on. Refueling has of course completed.
OK, so we'll just work down the pre-flight check and you may hear better pushback as well. I've just gone ahead and uh, requested pushback as well. Um, oxygen, uh, you've got the... Uh, I normally test it by going down here. And we'll just complete the rest of the items now. And just like any interactive checklist, you do of course just need to um, fill out the ones that the system cannot automatically detect, so such as gear pins there. OK, so that's our pre-flight check, and then we'll just go over and uh, we'll go through the before start check. So fuel is of course, I'm happy with that, windows are locked, MCP set. Of course on a 7.5, flight director's on, um, don't arm LNAV and VNAV until you're in the air. Uh, I'll just whiz uh, down these. So the last item is just to put on the uh, red anti-collision light. And this will initiate my script, first officer actions, of uh, just getting us ready there. You've got the same option available here via the auto perform, should you wish to use the flight factor one. OK, so before taxi checklist, we'll do that of course after we've pushed back. So uh, let's release the parking brake and we'll be on our way. And I want you just to uh, take note as well of the uh, pressurisation and the, the bleed panel here. That's correctly configured now for engine start. Uh, in summary, packs are off, isolation valve open, APU bleeds on, and then the engine bleeds uh, will be um, on in readiness once we start the engines. OK, so we've started our engines. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll turn our attention to getting the overhead panel ready. So what I tend to do first, isolation valve goes off, APU bleed off, um, pack, left pack on, right pack on, and then I'm just going to come over here and disconnect the APU generator from there, and then we'll switch off the APU down here. Okay, so we're just looking out for our pushback operator to uh, show us the pin there on the right hand side. There we go, and we'll switch on the taxi light. And that completes our before taxi checklist, so we'll just bring up the before takeoff checklist there in readiness and switching on the taxi light. Again, just gets my first officer, my virtual first officer there to um, just do a few other items such as setting the uh, correct set flap setting for departure. Just do a control check. OK, so a very short taxi as well. That's another tip I would give to you as well when you go flying. If you want to quicken up your taxi time, just have a bit of an, aware, an awareness of your airport. So, for example, here at Madrid, I have ordered it for so long because of the four runways. Um, but now I like flying in and out of Madrid. I just pick, uh, pick one or two runways that I mostly land at. OK, so before takeoff check, um, I've just gone down that as well and it's just waiting for us when we switch off the uh, runway turn off lights so as we're approaching the uh, the line here as it were I'm just going to go ahead move that over to the auto position and uh, that will again give my first officer their cue to uh, just do the final actions, such as the strobes. Um, I do leave, I think we'll leave those on for departure. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, we do. So I'm just going to click that. Note how it goes to red because on this occasion it does know that I'm, I'm just not doing what it expects. So let's put that down there and we'll be on our way to um, Palmer. Uh, let's put on the terrain radar. And off we go. So we're going to bring the engines up to about 1.2 EPA. I've put on the weather radar. Never mind. We'll sort that out. Both stable, unlike the pilot. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, that's why you don't take your 757s out of the fleet. Because those engines sound 
cooking awesome, if I say so myself. Here's 80 knots checked. Just keep her on the centre. Wind is actually showing us coming behind us. That's a bit of an oddity, I guess, from uh, active sky. Approaching V1, ready to take the hands off the throttles, and rotate. Nice and smoothly, does it? And there's positive rates, and the gear up. So just releasing a bit of pressure there on the uh, on the yoke that I have. Watching the flight directors. So still just watching the flight directors there, taking our cue from that. There's 900 feet, 1,000. OK, so we can go ahead and arm LNAV. And let's get to 1,500 here, and we'll go and arm VNAV. So there's the mode changes, EPA, VNAV speed, LNAV, the flight director. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll just put on the left autopilot. Should expect it now to uh, make a left turn. Just going to go ahead and correctly put on the terrain radar this time. So, speed's increasing. Let's just go ahead and select climb 2. And do flaps 1. And flaps up. So there's the terrain radar just refreshing. Bit of cloud that we're going to come into. Um, so in terms of the timing of the flight, I've not set the chrono have I, let's just set that. There we go. Um, in terms of the timings of the flight, of course we're left in um, at sunset, at dusk, and um, it will get dark, so by the time we're in Palmer, in uh, one hour's time, I expect we'll be landing in the uh, in full darkness. I I can't comment on that. Quite a short video then, so uh, I'll see you when we get to Palmer. Thanks for viewing so far. Any questions or comments, any routes you'd like to see, let me know. Thank you. Oh wow. <laughs>
3 and 237. So in case you've always been wondering what this part of the pedestal is on a 757, it's not where you put your tea and your sandwiches. Um, this is your ILS receiver down here. So you come down here and you dial in the ILS frequency. Uh, 109.3 and 237. In it goes, just like that. So the reason why I mention that is you do get some newcomers and it's quite a, a natural thing to do I guess, quite logical if you say used to something like the 7.3 where your nav receivers are down on the pedestal, you expect to tune it in there. Okay, uh, we need to as well select our approach speed so we'll just go for a flap 25 at 131. Auto brakes can be 2, nice long runway, um, 2 will stop us very, very nicely indeed. Let's do a cancel recall. I'm not doing this in any sort of um, correct order, but recall, you just look in there for any anything that's not reared its ugly head yet, as it were. And then uh, cinnamons, so you don't have like a nice fancy thing over here where you dial it in. You come down here onto the altimeter, and your left one, of course, is for altering your um, Q&H setting. The right one is for setting cinnamons, so in our case it will be uh, 230 something, so that's near enough. It doesn't call it out, that's up to the pilot monitoring. Um, they will have to call out, you know, approaching cinnamons, and then when you get cinnamons, they call that out as well. Um, same that side, I've just synchronised it over, uh, or my first officer just pop that in there as well. Um, what other thing can we just do as a as a quick thing for you to drop in the comments? Uh, assuming that you watch it this far, why are these switches? So that points upwards, that points upwards. The lights point wherever you want them to go. Uh, what else have we got? That's pointing upwards, that's pointing upwards, that's pointing upwards. You see a pattern here? They're pointing upwards, upwards, upwards. You see the same thing over on the uh, first officer's side as well. Um, again, they're pointing upwards, they're pointing upwards, even though that's set to right. Um, you'll see on the captain's side. That's set to left. So why does it still point up even though it's got a different selector? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you as we begin or our approach into Palmer. So that is of course Palmer down there that you can see, both runways. And just checking our position on the uh, star chart as well that's on my other monitor. So just crossed over a Adrix, I think I'm going to pronounce it. That might not be correct, but um, there's some terrain around there. So we've got the terrain radar on. It's showing us 5,000 feet um, on my star chart. So that, that's agreeing with that. Okay, so we'll make our way to Palenza, and then we'll make that right turn that we were discussing. It does look like, just looking on there, I don't know if that's some kind of last minute sharp turn, but if so, we'll just uh, smooth that out a bit if it doesn't, if it looks a bit too sharp. So 10,000 set. And the local Q&H as well, I'm not sure if we've mentioned that, that's 1018. Very nice view indeed, so you can see the route that we've taken in there from the, uh, from the west, just coming over the north of the island here sun is uh, rapidly setting over there now. And I've just took the opportunity to draw some range rings as well on the navigation display. So the outer one here is 25 nautical miles. So you can see that we're approximately 25 nautical miles away from the airfield at Palenza. So here's our right turn coming up now then at Palenza. Nice clear evening. You can see the runways where you just could there until I started talking um, but yeah as we said we're about 25 miles away just descending down to 5,000 feet so um, 
feeling okay about the uh, altitude that we're currently at versus the distance that we have to go. Uh, but we'll pop back in the flight deck and we'll just have a look at what VNAV is doing here. So we've got altitude capture, LNAV and command. So let's just wind the heading round to match there. So altitude hold and let's dial in two and a half thousand feet. I'll just give that a second and just let it round down. It's because I'm lazy. Okay, so I'll hold LNAV and we need to be down at um, uh, two and a half thousand feet in 16 nautical miles. So what we'll do, just another sort of use here of um, vertical speed. We'll just dial that in. Probably just go something like 800 feet per minute descent. And then we're going to look for the green banana, as we sometimes call it. And once it settles there at Abamu, that will be where we level off. Okay, so that's about right. And obviously we're now responsible for the speed as well. So let's just have a look at what the speed would be at Abamu. That would be 170 knots anyway. So we probably just want to increase our rate of descent. So probably we're just going to go back into VNAV then and let that uh, let that do it now. So you can see that it's increased the rate of descent. VNAV path is the active mode. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go down to two and a half thousand feet by here. But presumably it wants to do it in that way in order to decelerate down to 170. So it's actually at the moment just uh, gone uh, gone all the way to 250 knots and then just a bit more. Let's zoom in on the range. Okay, everything's looking good. Okay, we've just done our descent checklist. Probably done that, uh, should have done that earlier, um, but that's fine. Okay, we've just uh, confirmed that we have com um, completed our descent checklist and holding off there at 3,300 as the plane is just decelerating. So let's just go with flat one. And what I'm going to do is just take the uh, speed there. So we're going to come out of VNAV, go vertical speed and just going to wind that speed up a moment. Um, let's go ahead with flap 5 and approach checklist altimeters 1018 set once twice three times and the nav aids are set. That's our approach check completed. Let's just get the landing checklist ready as well. Let's go ahead we'll arm the localizer 500 feet per minute set coming down there. We'll level off at two and a half thousand just slightly after Obumu, but that's fine. That should be fine. That still gives us 11 miles there, so that's an 11 mile range ring, and that's a seven mile range ring. So just waiting now, watching what's going to happen. just take 10 knots here off the speed coming down to 180. Localizer is armed. There we go, we've got localizer active. I was just getting ready there to um, spin the heading bug round. Um, course, just reminding myself, 237 it normally sets it, it's because I went and uh, meddled with it. Okay, so localizer, just confirming the an altitude capture. That's fine, alt hold. We've done the lights, got the landing lights on, um, wing lights. 
So currently flap 5 coming in now to about 10 miles level off at 2,500 feet. Got movement there on the glide slope so we'll take flap 15 Just seeing a little bit of ballooning going on there, that's what you'd expect as it just settles back down and the engines just increase probably just should have wound down the speed bug to max. Let's go ahead, we'll arm the approach just going to let it settle on the approach. There we go, glide slope and we're going to go gear down You can see here how it will start to um, colour these items in green. But the cabin, I'll need to do that and say it's secure. Speed brakes armed, my first officer's just done that. Landing gears down, flaps are set. Let's just move that. Um, let's put it fully out of the way. 2,000 feet to go, we've got flap 15. Let's go, speed check. Come down now to 160 knots and let's go with flap 20. Approach speed, remind ourselves 130 I think we said, so that's fine. If you're thinking that's a bit slow, you perhaps never um, flown the 7.5. It's a great aircraft to fly, and um, but it does have some very, very low approach speeds. That's not uncommon. Okay, flap uh, 25 now. We'll just twiddle the speed back down. That's fine. I'm going to take the throttles. And I just want to let you know we're all counting you on the back. Okay, so I've got the throttles. Just watching there, the speed is decreasing quite a lot, so I just want to stop it from uh, reducing as quick as it was. Okay, so uh, with the winds at 226 at 7. Uh, I'm here Express 3914, you're clear to land from my 26 left. Autopilot's disconnected. So I'm just going to bring the engines up again. Probably uh, 1.2 EPA, but just anticipate that, just trim it down just a little bit. It's one thing with this aircraft, it's like the, um, the IXEG. It's uh, it responds incredibly well. It's a delight. And you just feel once it's stable, you just need a bit of trim, and hopefully it's not going to make me um, or my bad piloting skills aren't going to cause us to have a bad landing. Right a bit, right a bit, and down a bit, down a bit. Two reds, two white. Three reds, uh, three whites even. Ugh. But we'll just sink us down a bit there. So reducing the speed, starting to reduce on the on the throttles. Probably just touch down a bit later than we'd like. Now do remember we are landing on a runway and not in a field. That means no butter. Reverse, um, but we'll see if we're in the touchdown zone. I'd soon have a firm landing in the touchdown zone, then still be floating here and here and here. Okay, 60 knots, so reverses are stowed. Auto brakes still doing their thing, just decelerating there very, very nicely indeed. 57 minutes. Okay, well just... No... No, 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 of course it wasn't. Okay, let's just dismiss that for a moment. And... I'll just say 58 minutes now. But I will take full responsibility for that landing. Um, got myself a bit too high. And... If you're going to go and... Have those high sink rates... That'll be a bit difficult to um, to recover from. 
Okay, so uh, as we've said, 58 minutes. Um, just go ahead and switch that off. Okay, here's our follow me guy. So we'll just start to uh, clean things up. I think we're going to South 56. So I don't think that's too far from here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that is stand uh, 56, isn't it? Yep, so we'll just get the uh, nose a little bit forward there of the uh, of the yellow line that you'll see there as we move the lights back over it. That's it. And just a bit more power. And we'll switch off. No. There we go. You can see the marshal there, on just ahead of us. So I uh, don't particularly want to blind him there with the with the lights. Okay, straight on. I think that's what he's saying. And stop. There we go. Very nice. Let's go ahead and set the parking brake. And as we've got the APU available, so he will actually remain like that until you just cut the engines. I think that's the signal for them to go. So APU is connected. Um, we'll just go over to the other side here, the bleed panel, and isolation valve back on, APU on, just so we've got some air conditioning uh, on the ground. And back to the flight deck view and uh, we'll cut the engine so opposite to a 321 engine one cut and engine two cut and let's just check there they are running down yep actually i think he goes when you switch the beacon light off it's very fussy oh, right, yeah. There it goes. Okay, and let's just have a quick look then at the stable approach. Detailed report. So, not surprisingly, we were just a bit high over the threshold crossing height. Um, touchdown. Ouch. Okay, centerline deviation and the threshold distance. Well, the fact that that's not further down the runway. Um, does surprise me. Uh, pitch attitude is fine. Yeah, okay. So, apart from that, and like I say, no surprise because we had the massive glide slope deviation there. Um, just got myself a bit too uh, a bit too high on that. Want to score some pot? But again, welcome to. Um, oh, we just need to switch off the first officer's chrono. So, one hour twelve gate to gate. Um, but again, welcome to Palmer. Any uh, routes that you'd like to see me cover, then uh, do let me know. Any other questions? I will put that in the vid. Any other comments or questions? Do drop them in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. And uh, take care. I'll see you on the next flight. Bye bye.